Now, you are in the Ministry of Reconciliation, so you are in the people development business. Now, I know we got some family members, blood relatives, in-laws, some of my outlaws, but we can't give up on them because Jesus didn't give up on us. So we can't give up on them. See, there's a place for those that reject you. You know where it is? It's in the prayer box. It's on your knees in your prayer time. Okay? Because the only thing that's wrong with people is two things. One, they need Jesus. Secondly, they need more of Jesus. That's the only Greetings and welcome to another broadcast of Grow to Go Christian Center. My name is Assistant Pastor Herman Alexander Sr. And I want to welcome you this morning. Thanks for tuning in. And we're going to continue our teaching on our theme, Go. Okay? So grab your Bibles, your pens, your markers. Call up a friend. Let them know Pastor Herman's back on again with another powerful teaching. Okay? But before I come out and teach the word, we're going to have a praise and worship song that's going to bless you today. Okay? So after that, then I'll be back to teach you. Amen.
Okay, praise the Lord. That was a wonderful song from our praise team. Once again, the title of the message today is Go. Now, today's message, it will be the disciple slash discipling. Okay, the theme is Go, the disciple slash discipling. Okay, now, last, our last broadcast, we taught on where, why, when, and what. Okay, so we found out that God has called every believer to the ministry of reconciliation. That means reaching out to the lost, okay, those that are not born again, okay? And you have to really find out. Don't be bashful about it. Find out because some people say they're saved and they're not. Because, see, God is a God of order, and he will never go against the order that he's established in the earth. So to become born again, you must do what Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. So if you haven't done that, then you're not saved. There are some groups of people that think salvation comes from being baptized. That's biblically incorrect. Now, you should get baptized, but baptized, when you get baptized, baptizing is actually for somebody that has already confessed Jesus Christ. Baptism is basically uh, symbolic of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you're going down, it's symbolic of the death. Up under the water is the burial. Up out of the water is the resurrection. So when you get baptized, that's saying that you have already confessed. But many groups of people think that when you get baptized, then that's your salvation, but that's wrong. So when you're out there discipling people, talking to them and reaching the lost, find out. When you ask them, are they saved? And they say yes. Ask them, how did you get saved? Okay, and this will explain if they did it wrong. And it's not that you're kind of trying to condemn them. You're just trying to correct them, okay? Because when you got the word of God on the scene, when you got the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, your job is to tell them. Whether they reject you or whether they receive you, your job is to tell them. Okay, you're supposed to tell them, let them know. They may reject you, but at least you told them. Because if you don't tell them, you allow them to continue in their wrongdoing. Amen? Okay, now, last time we talked about uh, that some people say that God is in control. Well, to a certain extent, God is in control, but we have to invite God in. He's not always in control because he needs your help. He can't do it without you. You can't do it without him. Okay, the Bible says we're co-laborers, so we work together with God. See, salvation is about the whole man, but it starts with the spirit part of man, okay? Man being the tripod being spirit, soul, and body. You are a spirit. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. That's the real you. You've been placed inside of a physical body, and God has blessed you with a soul. Your soul consists of five components. Your mind, your will, your emotion, 
your imagination, and your intellect. Those are the five components of the soul, okay? And that makes up the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. Okay, so God needs your help, okay? Now, if the will of God was automatic, he'd make you get saved, make you come to church, make you pay your tithes. But he wants your will. He wants your heart. He wants you to do it from the heart. That's why he's given you a free will, okay? So those that willfully come to him will be blessed. Isaiah 119 says, if you be willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. You notice he puts the emphasis on you. So you have to make a choice. Every believer, everybody in the earth realm, sooner or later, you have to come to the point that if God said it, I'm going to do it. You got to be sold out for God. Amen. All right. Now, we also have talked about uh, in our where, why, when, and what, we found out that uh, we said, where are we supposed to go? And we found out the places that we go are our unsaved family members, our relatives, people that's on our job, people that's in our neighborhood, people at the grocery store that we visit all the time. You know, once you go there on a regular basis, you begin to know them. They begin to know you. But, you know, a lot of times you not always have the time to talk with them. But as you begin to know them, you know, reach out, exchange phone numbers. Because it's about salvation, okay? If Jesus says he came to seek and save the lost, and he left and said, the works that I do, you shall do also. So now you got your assignment, okay? You've got your ministry. Reconciliation, you got your assignment to seek and save the lost, okay? Secondly, we talked about why are we going? And we said we're going because... It's not God's will that any man perish. So everybody has to hear the gospel. Even the book of Matthew says that this gospel will be preached to the whole world and then the end will come. He wants everybody to have an opportunity to hear about Jesus so they can't say, well, I didn't know. I didn't hear about Jesus. If they don't hear about him, it's because somebody's not talking. Amen. So we got to reach out. If we adapt the principle, each one reach one, we'll cover it. Amen. We also found out that three main reasons that we should go. The first one is to seek and save the lost. The second one is to destroy the works of the devil. Okay. Now we know God has given Jesus all the power in the earth, but Jesus also has passed that to the believers too. You have the power through Holy Spirit. Okay. Third reason for going is church growth. God wants to increase the body of Christ, okay? Now, the third reason for going is when. We were talking about when. When do we go? Well, we found out that we're on call 24-7, 365 days of the year. We're on call to reach the lost. When the opportunity knocks, God expects you to say something, amen? When the opportunity knocks, God expects you to say something, amen? Okay, that sounds better. Praise the Lord. Okay. And then we talked about what to say when you go. There are different ways that you can reach somebody, but you have to meditate and ask God, ask Holy Spirit to give you the words to say to people. You know, also ask God, if you're really serious about reaching the lost for God, for Christ, ask God before you leave the house. So if somebody don't know about Jesus, bring them across my path, Father. Send me across their path, okay? And then be ready. Be ready. You know, Pastor Harvey always taught us, you should already have your message ready, what you're going to say, okay? Oh, it's always an opportunity to seek and save the lost. But God needs you. And if he needs you, or you're available. Amen? Okay. So now we found out that God's called us to the ministry of reconciliation. We found out where, why, when to go, and what to say. OK. And also we talked about when people reject you, you know, that's going to be in existence because they rejected Jesus and he was God. So if they rejected God, you know, they're going to reject you. OK. And they reject you not because of you. They reject you because of God. OK. Some people, they just don't want to recognize that it's challenging to believe in a God that you can't see but who has created everything that you do see. Amen. But that's how it is because they have to understand it's supernatural. It's not natural. It's supernatural. But God has placed, the Bible said God has 
shown everybody that a God exists. So people are really without excuse. They just want to do it their way. Because, see, the world system, you got to understand, the world system is designed by the devil. You have to look at it like this. The world is on their way to hell. We're really existing in pre-hell. Until you get born again, you're in pre-hell. But now that you're born again, your job is to help God pull out your brothers and sisters out of the fire. Okay? Because God can't do it by himself. He needs you. Okay? He does Everything that we want, need, and desire, God does it through a person. Okay? He does it through a person. When you pray for the money, God sends somebody across your path. God told me to give you this. Or he'll open the door in some type of institution and they give it. But he always does it through a person. That's his MO. That's how he does it. Okay? So you have to be willing. Like I was saying once before, when you pray for money, pray for more than you need. Your God said, I want to bless somebody else. I need 2000 but Father, give me three because I want to bless a couple of people with $500. Okay? God don't like stingy prayers. Amen? Okay? It's not about me, myself, and I. It's about who I can bless. Okay? Because he said he would bless you to be a blessing. So when you pray, pray that. Pray for more than enough. Back in the day when we, me and my wife got our first van, we prayed that we would get a van so we could pick up other people from church. And ever since, we've always had vans and we've always picked people up. Okay? All right. So you got to be in the will of God. Okay? Now, like I said, we found out we've been called to the Ministry of Reconciliation. We found out where, when, and why, what to say, and what to say when they reject you. Okay? Now, our new information, we're going to turn to our foundation scripture, three passages of scripture, Matthew 28. John chapter 13 and John chapter 8. John chapter, I mean, Matthew 28, John 13, and John chapter 8. Now, the purpose of this, this message, part two, is to reveal to the believers what a disciple is and what their responsibilities are to become Christ-like. And it's going to be done by faith. OK, once again, to reveal to the believers what a disciple is and what their responsibilities are to become Christ like by faith. OK. A golden objective is the believers will be able to become a disciple and to disciple others. And the mature believer will be able to recognize additional discipling techniques. OK, because you can't reach everybody the same way. Some people receive just straight out and some people because I say it like this sometimes the devil got to them before God did so they've been full of false doctrine and when you come with the truth sometimes they just don't re recognize they figure oh that's just another person going to church so how you deliver your introduction makes a difference okay that's why you need to be prayed up and the Holy Spirit give you what to say okay we said Matthew 28 Matthew 28 Let's look at uh, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach or make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Underline that. Whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So he said, whatsoever I have commanded you. So Jesus has taught you. So now you teach them. Basically, you're duplicating yourself. Because see, the Jesus basically duplicated himself teaching you. He said, the works that I do, you shall do also. And the Father taught Jesus because Jesus says, I only do what the Father tell me. So it's a duplication process. So that's what you're doing. You want the people to get the word like you got it. You want the people to understand the word like you got it so that they can teach others and they can keep going and going and going and going. And that's how the body of Christ gets enlarged. OK. But you got to know what you're talking about first. That's why you need to attend a good Bible believing Bible teaching word church that teaches the word. Because many churches out there talk about God, but very few teach God. It makes a difference. OK. Okay, let's go to uh, John 13. John 13. John chapter 13. Drop down to 
verse 33, John 13, 33. John 13, 33, it says, little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men shall know that you are my disciples, if on the condition you have love one to another. So basically what you're doing, you're implementing, implementing the unconditional love that God has given us. Amen. Because, you know, people are going to tick you off. God knows that. He says, be angry and sin not. So even though you want to go upside the head, you just got to remember sometimes it's the devil working through them. It's not the person you see. It's the person that you don't see working through them. So if you know that, then you don't want to hit them upside the head. You just go in your prayer time and beat the devil up. You know, Satan, take your hands off my brother in Jesus' name. You cannot work through him. I bind the spirit of mind control over them in Jesus' name. So you have to know to do that. You know, sometimes if you're in that work and the boss is acting a fool, then you go in the bathroom and you pray and bind that demon off your boss. Okay? Because the Bible says those that live godly shall suffer persecution. So we know the devil is going to come at us through ever who he can, whoever he can work through, that's who he coming. Okay, the Bible tells us don't give the devil place. But you got people, co-workers that don't know that, and they give the devil place. They come in with the devil on them, okay? They tell you to do stupid things, and so, um, sometimes you be wondering, that don't even make no sense. Usually when it don't make sense, Satan's behind it, because he does stuff to tick you off through other people, amen? Now, let's go to John 8, John chapter 8, John chapter 8. Drop down to verse 28, John 8, 28. Verse 28, it says, Then said Jesus to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, there it is, I speak these things, and he that has sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always, uh, I, for I do always those things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed on him. Then Jesus said to the Jews, which believed on him, if on the condition that you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Question. Does the truth make you free? No, it doesn't. The truth doesn't make you free because you have to do something with it first. If you look at the first part, when Jesus begins speaking in 31, it says, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. Then you will know the truth. See, you're only going to know the truth because you continued in it. Because if you don't continue in it, then you're not going to know the truth. You're going to be confused and you're going to spread confusion. So you have to know it. Just like if I teach you nine times five is 45, and then you take a test, and sometimes you put down 44, and sometimes you put down 46, you're going to get it wrong, right? You may fail your test because you have to continue that nine times five is 45 and no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Well, the same thing with the Word of God. If God said you can't have it, then you can't have it. If God tell you to do it, then you need to do it. Amen? So we have to continue in his word. Then we become the disciples and then we know the truth. OK, so it's the continuous. That's why he said faith come by hearing and hearing. It's the repetitive hearing of the truth that causes you to be a follower of the truth. OK, so you have to do that first. So become before you can teach a disciple to become a disciple, you have to become a disciple yourself. Amen. OK, now. In our introduction. We see that this is the will of God for every believer, okay? This basically is the first ministry outside of getting your house in order, amen? Because you got to get your house in order too, 
okay? You got to let the house know that it is those that have families. Because I know some people are single, they may stay by yourself, they self. But still, even if you stay by yourself, you still get your house in order. You got to clean up some stuff and throw some stuff away. Because people may come over and visit. And they can recognize if your house is in order or if it's in disorder, amen? But getting back to the people that live with you, you got to let them know we're going to serve the Lord and we're going to do this. You know, especially if you got some kids growing up, you got to let them know we're all representations of God. So therefore, people are looking at us because they see us go to church on a regular basis. So they're going to be not saying that they're judging. Let's say it like this. They're going to be observing how you carry yourself. Because remember, you're on call 24 seven. So you have to carry yourself as a child of God because people are looking and they'll be talking that I was uh, the people that I'm talking about they're not here they were members of this church one of them is a member I think one of them left I was on the phone talking with them and it was me a couple men and uh, and it doesn't mean they're bad people because of that but I was on the phone talking to them we was on the phone probably 30 45 minutes and after a while a couple of them left-handed words come out like that you know, so some people, they still talk like that. They still got their words. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter four, perverse words put far from you. That means you put them out so far that you can't reach and go get them. Amen. We know they still exist like that. But that just, you know, let you know that that stuff can happen. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a while. We talked on the phone for a good while. And then a couple of left-handed words came out. You know, I didn't say nothing. I just listened. And then a couple more left-handed words came out. <laughs> so, you know, it just we're still growing. Everybody growing. We'll be growing in grace until Jesus come pick us up. Amen. And the second person, same thing. I was talking to him for a while. And a couple of left-handed words come out like that, you know. But that just told me they're, they're growing too, okay. So, you know, uh, what the Bible says, examine who? Myself. I examine myself, okay, like that. Didn't make them a bad person. They just had a couple words that... That was that, that that they hadn't put far from them yet. That came out. They they that's all good. Turn to First Timothy three. First Timothy chapter three. First Timothy three. Let's start at verse one. It says this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, nor striker, nor greedy, of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that rules his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Amen. So we got to get our house in order as well as being a disciple ourselves, okay? And that's part of it. You have to disciple your husband. You have to disciple your wife. You have to disciple your kids if you have any, man. Okay, secondly, in that introduction, you are responsible to first become a good disciple so that you can disciple others. So it's critical that you are a member of a great Bible-believing, Bible-teaching word church and that you study the word on a regular basis. You have to put the word in you in abundance to get the world out of you because you're in the world every day. So you have to be in the word every day to offset the worldliness, okay? Otherwise, well, it's like this. I always say it like this. You have to feed your spirit, the feeding of your spirit must outweigh the feeding of your flesh. Whoever eats the most will dominate. Now, you have to study the word on a regular basis yourself and spend quality time with God, including praise, worship, and thanksgiving. Amen. Not just pray and then get up and leave. Thank him. Praise him. Amen. That should be automatic. That should be, even when you wake up, thank your father for another great day. Even before your day come, thank you for a great day. You're speaking it. Can remember, it's by faith. Amen. Now, you are in the ministry of reconciliation. So you are in the people development business. 
Now, I know we got some family members, blood relatives, in-laws, some of my outlaws, but we can't give up on them because Jesus didn't give up on us. So we can't give up on them. See, there's a place for those that reject you. You know where it is? It's in the prayer box. It's on your knees in your prayer time. Okay? Because the only thing that's wrong with people is two things. One, they need Jesus. Secondly, they need more of Jesus. That's the only thing that's wrong. Because we came down the same road that they're coming down. Amen? We just bumped into Jesus first. Jesus got a hold of us before the devil did. Uh, uh, what did I say like this? We, we got transformed before they did. Okay? That's why it depends on how you approach a person because they can receive or reject based on how you're approaching them, okay? Now, we said uh, in Matthew 28, the word nations, a multitude or company of people of the same nature. Basically, we said God is talking about everybody everywhere. We're not stereotyping. We're not uh, uh, being discriminated be discriminative like that it's everybody everywhere amen me and my wife we went to uh i think it was walmart's monday martin luther king birthday monday and uh we were walking down the aisle and this, this this young lady she had her hair braided and it just looked so neat and pretty i said oh your hair looks so beautiful she said i said did you do it yourself she said yeah i said it's good and then my wife seen her and she said oh that's wonderful my wife said do you braid her and she said, yeah. So they exchanged phone numbers. And uh, she said, I got my own page. So she grabbed the phone and showed us her hair page and stuff. I saw her. Uh, she got some very, very good talents. God bless you with some nice talents. And she smiled. I said, by the way, you go to church? She said, you know, me and my mom, you know, we don't go. But uh, she said, I believe in God. She said, but we're, we're looking for a church. I said, uh, 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 can I pray with you? And she said, yeah. So I got to say, I said, I said, will they get mad at you if I pray with you here in the store? She said, no, they ain't going to get mad. You know, so I ministered salvation. Holy Spirit got to say right there in the hour where she was working. Okay. This just happened to be a Walmart in Orno, Missouri. Like that, my wife said she wanted to go to Walmart. You know, we stay close to a Walmart on the south side, but she, I want to go to one in Orno. Okay. So we went to the one in Orno, see. But it don't matter. It's everybody everywhere. Okay. All right. Reach out. Each one, reach one. Amen. So we got another child in the kingdom. Okay. And I gave her my business card. I said, you need prayer about anything? Just give me a call like that. So we got her number. So we'll be uh, working on discipling her. Amen. Amen. All righty. Okay, now, in uh, our next foundation scripture, uh, in John 13, 33 through 35, we focus on the word no, K-N-O-W. Okay, in the Greek, it's number 1097. It's uh, spelled G-I-N-O-S-K-O. Genesco. It means to understand completely. In the Christian dictionary, it means to have information fully secured in the mind. It also means to be able to distinguish. So when Jesus says that you may know, they may know that you're my disciples. Okay, in other words, like uh, in John, t turn to John chapter, John 3 for a minute, real quick. John 3. John chapter 3. Verse uh, 1 and 2, John 3, 1 and 2, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know without a shadow of doubt that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these things, these miracles that you do except God be with him. So what are they saying about you at work? Do they know that you're a child of God? Do they know that you stand for that? Okay, what are people saying that know you in your neighborhood? Do they know? Okay, and that's, see, you, your, your, your lifestyle has to stand out. So they won't come to you with none of those left-handed jokes. 
that they would come to the other people normally, okay? Because they know you don't want to hear that stuff, okay? Amen. And in John 8, 28, same example, focus on the word that you people know that you are a disciple of Christ. Know that you are a follower of Christ, okay? Uh, uh, we've been working a lot of overtime at work, and they know I ain't working on Sunday. They know. But you know what? They asked me anyway. They, other than Herman, uh, we work in Saturday and Sunday. Are you, you, you coming in? I said, I'll come in Saturday for a little bit. Like that. I don't even have to talk about Sunday. They already know I'm not coming in Sunday. Okay. Even if we wouldn't have in church, I'm not coming in on Sunday. Amen. Because they know. All right. All right. Our first point. What is a disciple? Okay. The word disciple in the Greek, number 3101. It's pronounced or M A T H E T E S. Mathetes, Mathetes. Okay, a disciple is a follower of any great teacher. Secondly, a disciple is a follower of any great teacher of things good or bad. Because on the other end, before we got saved, people could tell you how to steal and get away with it, how to rob and get away with it, okay? Back in the day, me and my buddy, we used to steal CB antennas off of people's cars, okay? So if yours came up missing, I might have got it. Because we back then, you know, when you know it was a little era where people were getting CB radios where they talking to the other like that. Me and my buddy, we walk down the street, man, look around, I'm gonna screw that antenna off, run, never got caught, never got caught, you know. That's how it is, you know. It was just we ain't gonna say it was a blessing, we're gonna just say I never got caught. We say it like that, okay, <laughs> you, know, you, caught. you know, the hand is quicker than the eye, huh. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> that's what happens. So uh, if a person teaches you to do wrong, you are the disciple of that person, even though it's not of God. You know what I'm saying? But until you grow and mature, then you stop doing those things. You, you should stop doing those things. But we have some really, we have some elderly people that are still locked up. Amen. They haven't stopped yet. Okay. And then some of them, they just did the wrong thing and they got a lot of years. Okay. Uh, I know once we was in prison ministry and uh, the guys was telling us, hey, man, could y'all talk to him? He just got 200 years. So what do you say to a person that's got 200 years? God going to bless you. You know, how does that sound to him? He just got 200 years. <laughs> See, you really need to be prayed up to talk with him. Because first of all, is he going to listen? Amen. All right. Next. Say a disciple. We say, say a disciple is a follower of any great teacher of things good or bad. If it's not in line with the word of God, it's bad. Okay. Romans 14, 23 says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if it ain't in line with the word of God, it's just sin. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, okay? Now, we talked about what a disciple is. Now, what is a disciple of Christ? Because we can see that a disciple can be of good or bad. So a disciple of Christ displays unconditional love to one another, the same as God does to you. Write down John 13, 35. Read that one already. A disciple of Christ, secondly, must give up and sacrifice all that he has in exchange for the life that Christ has for him. Okay. Total commitment. Uh, write down Luke 14, 16 to 33. Colossians 3, 1 through 10. And Ephesians 4, 17 to 24. But we're going to read Colossians. Turn to Colossians chapter 1. I mean, Colossians 3, Colossians 3. I tell your neighbor, 
we got work to do. See, we got to become a great disciple and disciple others. Colossians 3, showing you verse 1. It says, if you then been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Why, Lord? For you are dead, and your life is hidden with who? Christ. So if your life is hidden in Christ, who you need to be hanging out with? Christ. All right. So we hang out with Christ, not physically, but spiritually with this word, amen, because he is the written word, the living word. Verse 4, it said, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify, here's your, your homework assignment, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walk sometime when you lived in them. But now you also put off all these additional homework, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the who man, the old man, which with his deeds and have put on who the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So you got work to do. Amen. You have to do it. God's not going to do it. He gave you the tools. He gave you Holy Spirit. So you have the opportunity to do it yourself. But he's not going to make you, but you're held accountable for not doing it. Amen. And then how can the person you're discipling, how can you be a good example to them if you haven't did this? Amen. So you got to be careful what you're telling them. And if you're struggling with something, let the disciple know. You know, I'm working on this myself. You know, because some people, they still smoking cigarettes, but they believe in God. You know what I'm saying? I'm working on the cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you, I would tell them, when you get paid, stop buying cartons. You know, start buying packs. You know, slow yourself down. Because they'll, they'll buy one more carton. Well, after this carton, I'm going to quit. So you finna smoke 10 more packages, and then you're going to quit. Well, you're putting addiction in you, so it's going to be hard to quit. You know what I'm saying? But I tell a lot of people, just ask God to take the taste away from you, and he'll do it. But you got to bean it from the heart. Amen? Okay. Let me see what we got there. Okay, next. A disciple of Christ must be obedient and abide in God's word. Abide meaning living in it. Living in it. You sold out. John chapter 8, verse 31. Isaiah 1, 19 and 20. And John 15, 1 through 14. Okay. Okay. So we talked about what a disciple is, what is a disciple of Christ is. Now, what must a disciple know? Okay, and all of this is by faith, okay? But you have to be what James 1.22 says, a doer of God's word, not a hearer only, amen? Okay, what must a disciple know? First, a disciple must know his identity, who he is. Genesis 1.26 says, God created man in his own image, in his own likeness. Okay. Turn to Genesis 3. Genesis 3. You can't forget this, and I don't want you to be confused about it, because it is what it is. John chapter 3. I mean, I'm sorry. Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3. Verse 1 says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, yeah, has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said, it's the first lie to the woman. You shall not surely die. For Verse 5, for God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as what? God's knowing good and evil. You can need to know that you are a God. See, the formula that God has created or hidden God's MO in Genesis, you notice he says, well, just turn right back. Turn right back. We'll look at a couple of them. We want to give you a scripture there. Uh, da, 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 da. Go down to uh, 
verse 24, 24, Genesis 1, 24. And God created great wells and every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly. How? After their kind. And every winged fowl after its kind. And God saw that it was good. Okay? Verse 20. I'm sorry. I read 20. I'm sorry. I read 21. I told you 24, didn't I? Okay, I meant 21. Okay, but now we're going to 24. Okay, it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature. How? After its kind. Cattle, creeping thing, and the beast of the earth. After its kind. So you notice God's M.O., his formula is after its kind. So in 26, he said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So he created us after his kind. So if God is the God, he can only produce another God. So you are a God. You're not the creator, but you are a God. That's why he gave you dominion and authority over all the earth, which includes the weather pattern. So you can speak to the weather and change it. So don't limit what you can do. You know, God tells you don't speak more highly than you ought, but you got to speak high because you're a child of God. You are a God. Okay. But you got to be careful who you talk to about that. Okay. They may, uh, they might want to crucify you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Now, secondly, what a, 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 a disciple must know, whose he is. Whose is John chapter 1, verse 12. I got to give you the scripture because that clock be speeding up somewhere. I don't know what's up with that clock. Let's put some, put some on it. Put a, a, a slower on it. Some. Uh, put the batteries in backwards so it's a little slow. See, okay, secondly, you must know whose he is. So you need to know who's you are, who you belong to. John chapter 1, verse 12, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18, and 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Okay, you are a child of God. You are a son of God. You are Sons and daughters of God. Amen. Third thing a disciple must know is what he has. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Acts 1, 8. Luke 10, 17 through 19. Psalms 91, 1 through 16. You have power. You have authority and you have dominion. So use it. If you don't use it, what happens? You lose it. Okay. So when you get into situations and circumstances, you don't know what to do. Okay. So use what you have. Know what you have and use it. Okay. Acts 1.8. We know that scripture by heart. You shall receive power. When? After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So if you don't have Holy Spirit, you need Holy Spirit. Otherwise, the devil will slap you upside the head and you'll wonder why I thought I was saved. No, you also need the power of Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit gives you the ability, the power to live the Christian life successfully. Okay. Now, a disciple must know what he can do. Okay. And you must also understand a lot of things you're doing, you're operating in the supernatural. Write down John 14, 12, Matthew 4, 23, Matthew 9, 35, Matthew 28, 16 through 20, and Mark 16, 14 through 20. Okay, laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's actually a supernatural act. You're not the healer, but the healer fo flows through you. And it's not about if they fall. It's not about if you feel it. It's about God said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's about you doing it in obedience. Okay, it's up to God to heal them. Okay, he said, he that believes shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So you're the instrument that God is using. You're the vehicle that God is using to cause things to happen. He can't do it. He has to do it through a yielded vessel or you're available. 
And the next one, what a disciple must know, a disciple must learn to walk by faith as his new lifestyle. Romans 1, 16 and 17 says, the just shall live by faith. It's not something we do on Sunday. It's not something you do just when you get into trouble. It's a lifestyle. It's an everyday lifestyle. That's why the mind has to be renewed. Uh, uh, Romans 12, 2 says, be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of the mind. So without any renewing of the mind, there is no transformation. So without the transformation, there would be no manifestation, amen, of your new lifestyle. You'll still be thinking, talking, and acting with a carnal mind because you didn't renew your mind to the word of God, okay? If the word of God says that the word is your life, you need to take this word, put it in you so that when you speak and act, on situation of circumstances, the word of God come out of your mouth. People can tell. One of my, we, we just hired a new guy, and uh, he's been sitting at the table where I've been sitting. And uh, he said, you go to church a lot, don't you? I said, well, I'm a pastor. He said, what church do you go to? And I was getting ready to do something. I said, I'll be right back to talk to you. But, you know, we had to start moving, and I didn't get a chance to talk to him, but I will. But uh, people should see the God in you. Not the God hanging on you. Nothing against wearing jewelry, but, you know, because a person has a cross on don't mean that you believe God. You know, it was a co-worker years ago. He had a cross. I said, why you got that cross on? He said, I want some peace in my life. I said, that's not how to get peace, man. I said, first of all, you need to be born again. Are you saved? He said, no. So I ministered salvation the Holy Spirit to him. Yeah. And then I seen him that next week. I said, what a cross at? He said, oh, I gave it to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so praise the Lord, Amen. And because of time's sake, I'm gonna—I gave you a lot of scriptures. I'm gonna pick it back up on our next broadcast. But uh, it's a lot of good information here, and I don't want to uh, leave you out. So we're gonna pick up next week. So give it the Lord a hand, Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. All righty, all righty. Thank you guys for tuning in to another broadcast. Uh, if this message has been a blessing to you, I want to advise you to call the number on the bottom of the screen, 314-867-1894. And if God is leading you to sow a seed because you want to be a blessing, then do that and God will change your life like you would know it. And also, I want to make sure that before you Reach out to other people about being the disciple. Like I said before, you need to become a disciple, but it first starts with salvation. So if you have never given your life to Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me and get you into the kingdom first before you start your role of discipling people and becoming a disciple as you will. Okay, repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if I believe in my heart, and confess with my mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, I would be saved. I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the son of God and he died for my sins and he was raised from the dead for my justification and I receive him right now as my Lord and Savior. You also said in your word that if I would ask for Holy Spirit, you would give him to me. So I'm asking you now to fill me with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come inside me, lead me, guide me, anoint me, empower me, direct my life so I may live for God. When properly instructed, I will speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives me utterance. Thank you, Father, for saving me and for filling me with Holy Spirit and for revealing to me by faith your plan for my life in Jesus name. Thank you, Father, for, uh, for giving me Jesus and Holy Spirit in my new prayer language in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to be to God. Amen. 
All right. Once again, thanks for tuning in. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, once again, call that number at the bottom of the screen, 314-867-1894. And let us know, and we're going to rejoice with you. Amen. All right, then. I want to pray a benediction over you, and thank you once again for tuning in. Father, we just give you praise, honor, and glory for those that tune in to our broadcast. I ask that you pour your blessings into the life. Let today be the first day of the best days of the life. Those that need healing, Father, ask that you heal them, deliver them, set them free, Father. Those that suffer through a COVID-19. Father, I pray that you supernaturally heal their bodies from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in Jesus' name. Those that are having financial challenges, Father, super speed up that stimulus check right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We just give you praise, honor, and glory, Father, for those that tune in. They will continue to tune in and grow, Father, and develop and become children of the Most High God as we are in Jesus' name. All in agree with that prayer. Say amen. Amen. Once again, thanks for tuning in. I love you. Keep God first in your life, and we'll see you on the next broadcast. Bye-bye.